I have not used this action types, you know. There's no mystery about being successful as a batsman. You know, you need a good attitude. You need um, the technical ability, obviously. You need to have good knowledge and, and, and overlay that knowledge, and you need concentration. And when you get out in the middle as a batsman to put a big score together, whether you are a test player, whether you play one-day cricket or T20, the principles are the same. Now, every type of person is different and they need to know what they can achieve, what they can't achieve, what they can do and what they can't do. So you might have a more aggressive um, type of person who plays a particular way and a more uh, extrovert type player, so uh, they're more attacking, more expansive and you might have a more introvert sort of person who's a bit more cautious and a bit more conservative. I am a believer actually is what type of person you are and what your character is, a lot of the time you play your cricket that way. So that comes out in the way you play, in the terms of what character you are. I think it's the whole package, you know, you need to be te technically good. You, you don't have to be a perfect player with a perfect technique to score runs. The important thing is, and to take wickets, the important thing is that you need to know how you can score runs or take wickets, what you do well and what you don't do well, and you play to your abilities and your limitations. You know, it's no good stepping outside of what you can do and what you can't do because you'll make mistakes. So there is no one format or one technique to be able to score runs in because as long as you know... Uh, how you can do it and whether you play well off the back foot, whether you play the cut well or whether you drive well. You know, if you, if you look at a Viv Richards from years ago, he used to work the ball from off stump through the leg side. Now, you wouldn't coach that way to play, but it worked for him and he had a great eye and it was very successful for him. So you need to quickly work out what your style of play is. Yes, you're always looking to enhance that. Yes, you're looking to improve that and upgrade that all the time with your movement, your concentration, your ability to compose an innings. But the important thing is to know what you can do and what you can't do. At whatever level you are, that's quite important. It shouldn't make any difference at all. You shouldn't be focusing on different things. Once you get over the vulnerable period, when you start your innings, you should get into your rhythm. Once you're in the rhythm, you should not um, you know, try and step outside of that zone, try and be too expansive, try and think, well, I've reached 20 or 30 now, now I can relax, now I can play my shots, now I don't have to think about it so much. Generally what happens is you make a mistake, you make a bad decision, you take on a ball that's not there to hit, and you get, you invariably get yourself out. So once you get in, you should be playing in the same rhythm all the time. Batting is about rhythm. When the right balls come along, you put them away. If the right balls are on target, then you defend them or leave them. It's quite a simple uh, method. The more you complicate it, the more difficult it's going to be. So you get into a rhythm and it shouldn't really make a difference from when you're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, up to 100 and so on. Yes, it should get easier because you're seeing the ball better, you're moving your feet better, you know, you're feeling more comfortable. But you should have been employing the same method all the way through. Of course, if your head and eyes are in line with off stump, you know exactly when the ball is on your eye line, it's on target. So if it's coming straight at your eye line, you know it's on target. If you know where your off stump is but you, your eye line's not correct, you're either outside it or you're inside it, you've got to guess and, and estimate where the off stump is. If you get yourself on off stump and your head on off stump, basically, or middle and off off stump, when bowlers talk about bowling straight, they are talking about bowling off stump and middle and off. They are not talking about bowling leg stump and middle and leg. So, it's much easier and simpler if you align your head, keep it still, over off stump, so the, the ball's on your eye line, you know it's dead straight. If it's outside your eye line, you might be able to attack it or leave it depending on the length of the ball. 
And if you know if it's inside your eye line, there's a good chance it's going down the leg side so you can play it through the onside. It's quite simple, so line your head up with off stump and you won't go far wrong. Um, I'm not sure you can coach it. Fast hands, generally when you're coaching a, a player, a performer, you want them to play as late as possible. Generally problems with scoring runs and batting and the movements and batting, transferring your weight backwards and forwards, come when you move too soon, not when you move too late. So the ideal trick is to play as late as you can and then be as dynamic as you can. So fast hands, means that you can adjust with your hands, but the later you can play, the more you can do with the ball. The more you let the ball come to you and play it under your head, under your nose as they say, the more you can manoeuvre the ball. If you go towards the ball too early, you're stuck in position. And then sometimes you have to adjust with your hands, but it's not ideal. So play late and then use your hands in conjunction with your body movements.